The first two chapters that we'll be covering this semester deal mostly with measurement and doing calculations using measurements. There's a lot of different types of measurements we'll be doing. If we want to measure masses, we will use something like this electronic balance. We can set an object on that balance, and it will very quickly tell us the mass of that item. In this particular case, it's 130.08 grams. We have many different um, devices we can measure volumes in. One of them is this 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, and its smaller cousin, the 10 mil graduated cylinder. You'll be using those in the first experiment we're doing this first week. Later in the semester, we'll be using burettes, also useful for measuring volumes, and if our volumes don't need to be terribly accurate, we will use something like a beaker. We can measure lengths or distances using something like a meter stick. So we'll begin chapter one talking about measurement and the metric system. Some of you are probably already familiar with the metric system, but we'll get into a little more detail here in the chapter videos. And then in chapter eight, we'll sort of transition into doing calculations. You're going to learn how to do conversion problems where you change one type of unit into another. And I'm going to hopefully convince you that that's actually a very important thing to be able to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I've got videos on Canvas that you can now go to that will talk about all the topics we need to cover in chapters one and eight. So let's go ahead and get started. In chapter one, we're going to be dealing a lot with measurements. So let's start out by measuring something. Let's use this table, for example. Now, looking at this table, I would say that the length of this table is six. Is it six? You know, I look at it again, I'm thinking, no, maybe the length of the table is actually two. But no, no, one more time, I, I'm really thinking about it now, and it occurs to me that the table is actually 72. So which of those is the correct length of the table? The answer is they're all correct because the thing we left off of here was units. One of the things you're going to learn in this chapter is that it is very important whenever you make a measurement or you report a measurement, you have to have units. Otherwise, it's meaningless. Six what? Two what? Well, the table is actually six feet across. It's also two yards, and it's also 72 inches. So all three of those measurements were correct, but you have to give people units. If you told someone it was, how far is it to Lodi, and you said uh, 20, 20 what? Well, it's 20 kilometers. So you have to tell people the correct Unit. So as we go through chapters 1 and 8, make sure that you're paying close attention to the units in each of your calculations and in your answers. Hi, this is Rob. Welcome to Math Antics. In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of measurement, which is an important topic in math and especially in science. We're also going to take a look at a particular system of measurement called the metric system. Objects have different physical properties, right? Like size, weight, volume, etc. Well, the whole point of measurement is to quantify those properties, which just means expressing them as a number. Without measuring, you could say that someone is tall or short, or that a package is heavy or light, but those are relative terms that don't give us very specific information. Instead, if you were to make actual measurements, you could say that someone's height is 130 centimeters, or that a package weighs 5.2 kilograms. Measurements use an actual number to describe properties like that, so that you can know them more precisely. But there's a catch. Unless you know what a centimeter or a kilogram is, those measurements won't be very helpful. Centimeters and kilograms are examples of what we call units of measurement. 
Units of measurement are predetermined quantities that we use as references. And it's really important to be familiar with common units of measurement so you know what various measurements mean. Units of measurement aren't something fundamental to math, like addition and subtraction are. Instead, they're amounts that people invent and agree on so that we can communicate. In fact, we could agree to use just about anything as a unit of measurement. I could tell you that I'm 13 hot dogs tall, and my weight is 3,259 donuts. The problem with those units is that hot dogs and donuts aren't very consistent. And unless you and I are using exactly the same hot dogs and donuts to measure, we'll probably come up with different results. To get around this problem, the units that we use in math and science are standardized, which means that they match official standard amounts that can be measured over and over again to give exactly the same result. There's even a government agency called the Bureau of Weights and Measures that defines and maintains those standard amounts. Well, what do we have here? Nothing, just measuring stuff. Let me see that. Ha! Just as I suspected, this isn't properly calibrated. I just had it checked. Yep, gonna have to take it into the lab for adjustments. Don't let it happen again. So, is there a number I call to get that back? Of course, getting a bunch of different people to all agree to use the same standards is not always an easy task. And throughout history, a variety of different units have come in and out of popularity. For example, the ancient Egyptians used units like cubits and kites, which aren't so popular today. In modern times, there are still a lot of different units used in different countries. But the most popular system of units used around the world is called the metric system. Well, its official name is the International System of Units, or SI units for short, which stands for the French Système International. But the term metric system is still often used to refer to this system. The metric system is a really great idea, because it makes the math involved with certain measurements and unit conversion much easier to do. That's because, just like our base 10 number system, most units in the metric system take advantage of powers of 10. The idea behind the metric system is to start with a base unit and then use standard prefixes to make other units that are bigger or smaller than that base unit by powers of 10. Here's a list of some of those prefixes. To see how they work, let's consider a key unit in the metric system called a meter. A meter is a basic unit of distance or length, and it happens to be about this long. As you can see from our prefixes, the unit that's 10 times bigger than a meter is called a decameter. The unit that's 100 times bigger than a meter is called a hectometer. And the unit that's 1,000 times bigger than a meter is called a kilometer, or a kilometer. But this system also has prefixes to define units that are smaller than a meter. The unit that's 10 times smaller, or 1 tenth of a meter, is called a decimeter. The unit that's 100 times smaller, or 1 hundredth of a meter, is called a centimeter. And the unit that's 1,000 times smaller, or 1 thousandth of a meter, is called a millimeter. Get the idea? There are also abbreviations for each of these units to make writing them down a lot more convenient. A meter is just abbreviated as M. And then you put other letters in front of that for the other units. For example, a kilometer is abbreviated KM, while a centimeter is abbreviated CM. So why does the metric system make working with units easier? Well, notice the pattern we get if we put these units in order with the largest unit on the left and the smallest unit on the right. Each unit is 10 times bigger than the unit immediately on its right and 10 times smaller than the unit immediately on its left. That's exactly the same pattern that the number places use in our decimal number system. This diagram can give you an idea of how the units relate to each other. For example, one kilometer is the same as a thousand meters, and one millimeter is the same as 0 .001 meters, or one one thousandth of a meter. And because all these different units of length are based on powers of 10, you can convert between them just by shifting the decimal point one place at a time, which is equivalent to either multiplying or dividing by 10, depending on which direction you shift. 2.754 kilometers is the same as 27.54 hectometers, which is the same as 275.4 decameters, which is the same as 2,754 meters, which is the same as 27,540 decimeters, and so on. You can convert to the next smaller metric unit by shifting the decimal point to the right, which is equivalent to multiplying by 10. And you can convert to the next bigger metric unit 
by shifting the decimal point to the left, which is equivalent to dividing by 10. For example, 9.8 millimeters is the same as 0.98 centimeters, which is the same as 0.098 decimeters, which is the same as 0.0098 meters, and so on. So you can see why the metric system is so useful. It was designed with our number system in mind, which makes it easy to work with. Oh, and even though the metric system defines a lot of different units with all these prefixes, not all are equally popular. For example, it's not very common for people to use decameters. They'll usually just say 10 meters or 25 meters instead of saying one decameter or 2.5 decameters. In fact, there's really just four metric units of length that are frequently used. And they are the millimeter, the centimeter, the meter, and the kilometer. Oh, and of course, nanometers are commonly used when referring to teeny tiny stuff like microbes or computer chips. A nanometer is one one billionth of a meter. So that's how metric units of distance or length work. But there's another important quantity that uses the same powers of 10 prefix pattern, and that's mass or weight. Mass is a measure of how much actual matter an object contains, which is closely related to its weight on Earth. In the metric system, the basic unit of mass, or weight, is technically the kilogram, but we're going to start with just the plain old gram to see how the same prefix pattern we use for length can be used for mass also. For reference, a gram is the amount of mass equivalent to one cubic centimeter of water. A decagram is 10 times bigger than a gram, a hectogram is 100 times bigger, and a kilogram is 1,000 times bigger. And similarly, a decigram is 10 times smaller, or one-tenth of a gram, a centigram is 100 times smaller, or one-hundredth of a gram, and a milligram is 1,000 times smaller, or one-thousandth of a gram. See? The same pattern is used. And all of these units of mass have abbreviations also. The pattern of abbreviation is similar to the metric units of length, but instead of an M for meters, you use a G for grams. KG is kilograms, MG is milligrams, and so on. Again, because these units of mass are based on powers of 10, you can convert between them just by shifting the decimal point. You can convert to the next smaller metric unit by shifting the decimal point to the right, which is equivalent to multiplying by 10. 5.24 kilograms is the same as 52.4 hectograms, which is the same as 524 decagrams, which is the same as 5,240 grams, and so on. And you can convert to the next bigger metric unit by shifting the decimal point to the left, which is equivalent to dividing by 10. 16.3 milligrams is the same as 1.63 centigrams, which is the same as 0.163 decigrams, which is the same as 0.0163 grams, and so on. But, as was the case with units of length, many of these units of mass are not used as often as the others. For example, centigrams aren't as popular because people will usually just say 10 milligrams or 25 milligrams instead of 1 centigram or 2.5 centigrams. The units of mass that you'll most commonly encounter in everyday life are the milligram, the gram, and the kilogram. So make sure you're familiar with those. All right, so that's the basic idea behind measurement and the metric system. Measurement helps us describe things in the world we live in and to compare them using units. And the units in the metric system are specially designed to play well with our base 10 number system. But it's important to know that the SI, or metric system, does use some units that are not based on powers of 10, like time, for example. The basic SI unit of time is the second. But units of time that are larger than a second are still the traditional ones that are based on the motion of the Earth and the Sun, like minutes, hours, days, and years. Fortunately, units of time that are smaller than a second do use the base 10 prefixes, such as milliseconds and nanoseconds. I wish I had more time to talk about time in this video, and all the non-metric units that are still commonly used today, like feet or pounds, but I'm afraid those will have to wait for future videos. There aren't too many exercises for this lesson, but if measurement and the metric system are new topics for you, you might want to give them a try. As always, thanks for watching Math Antics, and I'll see you next time. Road signs in miles, vegetables in grams, beer in pints, and wine in litres? Measurements in the UK can be confusing. It's a mix-up of metric and imperial. 
But Britain's exit from the EU, expected in 2019, is reviving a push to move back entirely to the imperial system. Will the UK tag along with only three countries that still use feet, inches and gallons? Or will it follow Europe and use litres, metres and kilos? Or will Britain continue using both systems the way it does now? Either way, mixing scales, weights and measures has caused problems over the years. Here are three measurement mishaps. We have ignition and we have liftoff of NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter as we continue to explore the mysteries of the red planet. It may have taken off all right, but in 1999, NASA's $125 million Mars Climate Orbiter disappeared. We have a serious problem with the Mars Climate Orbiter. Uh, we may, in fact, be facing a loss of mission. An internal review found Lockheed Martin engineers used imperial units such as feet, pounds and inches in the navigation software. Meanwhile, NASA navigators used metric measurements. That caused the spacecraft to fly too close to Mars, where it is believed to have burned up in its atmosphere. In 1983, an Air Canada plane ran out of fuel in the middle of a flight due to a metric mix-up. A malfunction on the fuel indication system forced the ground crew to manually calculate how much fuel was needed. But the fuel was measured in pounds instead of kilograms. That caused the plane to run out of fuel halfway through its planned route. Fortunately, the pilot managed to land safely at a Royal Canadian Air Force base and none of the passengers and crew on board were seriously injured. A Tokyo Disneyland roller coaster derailed in 2003 due to an axle error. The specifications for the coaster's axle had been changed to metric units a few years earlier, but in 2002, the old documentation, based on imperial units, was used to order new parts. Since the axle that was ordered was smaller than the proper design specs, it broke. Luckily, none of the 12 riders were injured. 